Hi guys, welcome back to my little YouTube channel and even more welcome back to my little series all about this 60 centimetre uh, reef habitat from TMC. Um, first of all I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's liked, shared, commented on this channel. It's really spurring me on to try and make as much content as possible. Uh, so that being said, let's have a little look at protein skimmers. <laughs> Hi guys, so back again and today I'm going to talk about all about protein skimmers and what they do and the advantages of having a protein skimmer on your reef tank. So the long and short of it is that a protein skimmer is a cylindrical acrylic tube that fills with water and air. Um, it gets mixed together, chopped up to make fine bubbles. Those bubbles attract fish waste, fish poop, it um, attracts like fatty acids and all sorts of uh, things that are in the water uh, before they break down into uh, phosphate and nitrate, which are the things that can, can pollute the water. So you're gonna essentially be creating mass of air bubbles, which are gonna become like a magnet to this dirt that's in the water. That's gonna make this dirt stick to these air bubbles and it's going to um, essentially it's going to pull it out of the water and it's going to be <clears throat> brought to the surface of your collection cup of your protein skimmer and you're going to be able to then remove these pollutants before they become toxic to the tank before it creates a um, a toxic environment for your fish. Now, your, your fish and corals, well, your corals especially, will need some form of phosphate and uh, nitrate and things like that to feed on. Um, but because there will be a continuous source from feeding and from fish waste, um, that can build up quite quickly. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you're removing a, fair, a fairly large amount of this before it becomes toxic to the aquarium. Okay, so I don't know if it's the case now, but it was always recommended that you go for a protein skimmer at least double the water volume of your tank. And this is the Reef Skims 300 Pro. And I'm guessing the 300 stands for 300 litres, and this is a 144 litre tank. So it would sort of stand to reason that that's why this is the uh, skimmer that they suggest you have. Um, and there's a few really interesting features. You know, I've had quite a few protein skimmers and I really like a couple of the features that are going on with this. Considering it's such a reasonably priced skimmer, the fact that it comes with a DC pump that's completely like variable speeds means you can, you can really, really control how much water is going into the skimmer, which means you can control the the amount of skimmate that you're producing because skimmers when you first put them in your tank have a tendency to overflow quite a lot because like this tank I've just been ghost feeding it it won't have the amount of nutrients in there to be pulled out plus I want to keep some nutrients in the tank this is the reason why I haven't added the skimmer until now is because I want to keep nutrients in the tank to feed the bacteria so now this tank has been cycling for three to four weeks I think it's time that I can add the protein skimmer just to clean up this water a little bit before I do my first water change it has a tube underneath the collection cup so you should be able to empty it without having to take the collection cup off which is unusual for some of the smaller skimmers and it also has a collection cup cleaner so it has a device on the top of the cup that you can spin so that you can clean the neck of the skimmer cup without actually having to remove the skimmer cup so this could become really handy if you wanted to automate the system um, because you could attach it to a separate um, reservoir to collect the, the skimmate waste and that could be connected to a float switch which meant that you could um, uh, turn, it would automatically turn off and you'd be able to just empty that. So it means that there's, there's a lot of stuff that you could add on to this later on down the line if you wanted to go more that kind of, more that kind of um, route. So let's have a little look at this. 
So something I think that's well worth noticing is that I've actually emptied some water out of my sump because I had the water level really high here. And um, obviously there's an optimal level for the skimmer to work at. So it's really worth noting that this baffle here is actually gonna keep this uh, section of the sump at a constant height for the skimmer. And um, yeah, I should imagine it's gonna be at the optimal level. So when you're filling your tank, actually, um, this is gonna be the chamber that the water level will change in. So what I've done is I've moved my auto top up um, sensor into this chamber now because when it was higher than this baffle yes the water level would change through both but now that it's lower um, than this baffle here it's going to be this chamber so you should always have your top up sensor with uh, your return pump if you're going to run it as it should be run uh, which is lower so then this is going to be a constant height chamber so what i want to look at is um seeing if it actually matches up with the water level on the skimmer skimmer's in it's at the optimal water level line as you can see just there let's turn it on i'm expecting it to properly overflow Okay, so the skimmer's in and running. As I thought, it's just overflowing slightly, although not as bad as what I thought. You really want to aim for the bubbles to be around there in the neck. And you can see this one's just slightly, slightly a bit too, uh, a bit too frothy at the moment. But normally it takes a couple of days to a week or so just to bed in, get its slime coat and, um, yeah, to break in. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to break in a new skimmer, but there's lots more adjustments you can do. Um, you've got the gate valve here where you can let more water in or restrict the water. And then of course you can always uh, restrict the airflow or um, increase the airflow, or you can run the tube outside or you can add ozone. You can also use a little bit of egg crate and just raise the skimmer off the ground a little bit more. And you've got the controller that you can turn up or down. All right, so here we are. It's been a couple of days now and I'm really impressed because it's actually already started to um, create some skimmate here. So that's a really good sign considering I'm only ghost feeding this tank. So the next thing I've got to get on top of is some more water tests to see if it's time to start adding some cleanup crew to this tank. Um, and also I'm going to have to start thinking about light. Alright guys, so that's it for today, all about protein skimmers. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who likes, comments, shares and subscribes to this channel. Um, it really spurs me on. Um, I think next time we're going to start looking at some light on this tank.